So my name is Sayed and I own a company called the Wave Tonics and we are located in Toronto, Canada. And the thing is, uh, my company does all kind of the high speed PCB design stuff. Uh, like we are mainly dealing with the, uh, the PCI Gen 4, 5 and we are, we are also working on the uh, like the PAM4, the NRD stuff, which is like rated up to 56, 56 you know, gigabit per second speed. Uh, this is, that's a real ultra high speed, you know, and where you really need to deploy your high speed design techniques to work with that. And we also support the hardware design as well. And we are working with all kind of, you know, uh, the hardware design. And we are providing the mechanical design support as, as well, where we do the 3D simulations for your mechanical stuff. So it's a one-stop shop called Wavetonics where, where, where you can we, we can do uh, like almost everything. So when you say uh, signal integrity, you know, like it really comes into play when you have really have the high-speed uh, design stuff. So what you wanna do, like you wanna have that you don't have any deflection on your high speed lines and what is the best way of doing it is basically by maintaining uh, the impedance across your line so what is the goal is the goal is that you want to make sure that you have uh, the same impedance right from the source to the load and between the transmission line because if you have a mis impedance mismatches you will have all sort of uh, uh, issues the EMI issues and you will not be able to read the data out correctly at, uh, at your at your like the load end so you want to make sure that the one thing that I would suggest that when you are doing something you have to make sure that you check out the data sheets what impedance uh, you are working at and how you how you want to control it because if it is not controlled then you're inverting all sort of issues Yeah, I believe when you say uh, you know the tight coupling, uh, you try to uh, like you trying you trying to ask that when we have a differential pair, you know, couples, you know, as a pair, like why why we do that? The thing is that when you have you have to think about the transmission line because you have the same signal with two different polarity in it, positive and negative, and we are running that uh, signal side by side with a tight uh, with, with, with tightly coupled, and the thing is that the the major uh, the major, you know, that issue catches is like the common mode noise ejection. So it cancel out the effect of the common mode noise, which basically the primary cause of the EMI issues. So that's why you run the differential pairs in a tight coupling. Yeah, that's a uh, LGI is a totally a different world, you know. Like when you have, because now, now. Uh, like in this uh, uh, in this time we are seeing that the packages are being smaller like used to have you know the one millimeter pitch and the point eight now we are working with the point three and the point two millimeter as well so when you are dealing with that sort of fine pitch uh, devices what you need you need uh, the SDI the help and SDI helps you out but it's not like that you are just jump into the SDI and start doing the work so you have to consider first of all that whatever you are building, trying to build, really can they build or not? So the one consideration that I would suggest if you are dealing with the SDI uh, thing, you have to consult with your fab shop. Because if you consult with their fab shop, they will give you some ideas that this is the, these are the constraints that, we, that you should be looking at. And this is how you should break out your uh, system. Because if you, are, if you design something, and you send that to the fab shop and they say no bit, it doesn't make any sense. So I always encourage that if you are dealing with the SGI, always get your PCB fab shops uh, on board first. Let them know what you're trying to build. Ask them what are the constraints that I can follow and then you can go from there. Because SGI is, uh, is a complex, you know, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a complex area. It's not like a simple PCB design. You will have to think about the micro VR, you will have to think about the laser VR if you are dealing with that. You will have to see that what, how many laminations you're gonna use. Are you, are you just using a very simple, you know, a GI where you have a top and bottom, you know, with the, with the micro VRs and in between you have uh, one buildup. 
that's the most you know like uh, simple SGI you can have or you are going with uh, the all layer inter interconnects so these are the things that you have to consider uh, when you are dealing with the, the SGI stuff well the most common issue that uh, because I am a consultant as well and I, I do the EMC consultancy so I see that lots of you know design uh, they they you know they, they build the prototype and they basically like test all those things and then they send them to uh, at one point maybe like for few after few revs when you sort all sort out all the debug issues and all those things now it's time for a complete product uh, to send to uh, you have to think that uh, that EMC is not for a single PCB. When we say the EMC, we are talking about the complete system that could basically have the multiple PCBs in it. When I say multiple PC, PCBs, I mean that we have the modular system. And when that system combined, you basically complete a complete system, and that system is going towards uh, EMC testing. Uh, EMC testing. So the issue that I see uh, quite often is that the most of the time, the EMC issue, uh, the EMC, the EMC issues can be resolved if you have the correct stack up if you have the right stack up then the, you can cut you know that most of the emc problem for example you know i can give you a uh, 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 thing over here that sometimes what happens when you design the stack up you don't really uh, cater the uh, thing that you have to have a small less distance between your power and the ground plane so what you do, you basically keep the large spacing between the power and ground plane. What it does basically, it creates a, it, it basically generates uh, a big gap, and you have a really poor decoupling. When you have a poor, really poor, poor decoupling, it also means that it will, if it will, it will affect your PDN performance as well. The PDN profile will be quite low. So if you wanna, if you wanna keep your PDN impedances, you know, as low as possible, you basically have to see that. Uh, you have to have a good stack up where you have a real uh, tight coupling between your power and, and, and ground plane. So I think that this is the one challenge that I see that if you, if you are working with the stack, if, if, you, if you have the right stack up, then you can cater most of the EMC issues. So I think this is the, the benchmark that we have, uh, that, we, uh, that we did is so far. So I work uh, with few projects that involve the 0.2 millimeter, you know, that, you know, the CSP packages. So it was uh, a breakout package, you know, where we break the, uh, the you know, 0.2 millimeter CSP package to a 0.8 millimeter. So it becomes an interposer, right? So you don't need to deal with the, uh, directly with the 0.2 millimeter uh, devices. Uh, so the, the challenge is that, uh, first of all, that we had to find a vendor, a fab shop, who can build, you know, for us, because we, are, we were talking about a three, four lamination cycle. And then we are using the stack and stagger vias. With all these complications, what you invite is basically the manufacturing yield. If you want to keep your yield high, so you will have to, you will have to, you know, like, uh, you'll have to see some trade-offs. Unfortunately, unfortunately, when you deal with the SDI PCBs, you are not getting uh, the high yield. Uh, the yield is low. That's why you pay a lot of money, you know, when you're dealing with the SDI PCBs. So I think the, 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 the major challenge is that uh, you need to find uh, the fab shop that could really build a design that you want. Then we are dealing with the, the fine, fine traces because we, we were talking about a like three mil crack and three mil, you know, uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, spacing, and I think the VR size that that we use for the for the laser for the laser reel it was like around uh, three mil. So it's really hard uh, to to do to do to do that. So you have to have come up with the laser VRs uh, and that pro uh, and that project. Yeah, so like uh, when you are dealing with, the, as I mentioned earlier, high-speed PCB design, that you, the one, the most critical part, part is that to know your impedance and to, to, to basically see that how you, how you're gonna match it. So in order to have that, we have three, you know, like uh, parameters. We have the dielectric distance between, uh, between two layers. 
we have the, uh, the trace with spacing and, uh, and the width. And you have the t obviously the material, uh, you know, the, the, the decay value. Oh, so you have, you have to play with all these three things. So once you go with the high speed, let's say I'm talking about uh, NRZ and the PAM4 stuff. So our, uh, our go-to material is the Macron 6. We use Macron 6 in almost in every design uh, we do because it has a, it, it is a low loss, you know, material. Uh, and then you have to see the weave of that material as well, because if you have, if you see that the glass weave, the fiber weave, you want to see that what weave uh, best uh, suits you. Yeah, a few, you know, a few things that I have learned so far in my entire career that, uh, that you should use. The, the first most, it's not technical, it's kind of kind of management. I would say that you have to engage your stakeholders. First of all, you have to know that what are your stakeholders. Uh, if you are doing uh, the, the layout, then basically you have to engage your hardware designer, you're the PCB layout guy, your mechanical designer and all those ones. And most importantly, you, your vendors, you're the fab assembly shops. Take them on board, involve them early, you, uh, what I see, you know, like in most of the companies that we work in a silos, we work in a cubicles, we don't share information even in the same company. So if you want to build a good product, you will have to basically uh, involve all the stakeholders so that you could have the product in, in time. Yeah, and the innovative solution that I, I think that I have used is basically the design reuse function that you should use almost all the time because what happens we use some circuits quite often right so you don't want to redo you don't want to reinvent the wheel why, why we do that if we have designed something earlier we just need to know that where we have used it just grab that design from from there reuse it and save your time i see that even with the most of the switch mode power supplies that we have designed earlier designers are trying to do them again what you're doing over here basically you are, first of all, you are reinventing the wheel. Then you are inviting more problems. Design is not consistent as you have done before because that design was done already. It's tested, works, works fine. So why you want to do it again? So keep the design reuse function. And the other thing that I would like to, uh, being an innovative designer, is like uh, use a uh, checklist system. When you release the design, when you initiate, when you initiate, uh, initiate the design, uh, have your checklist. that that basically tells you that what are the parameters you should be looking at it. When you release the design, make sure that you have all the parameters checked, your DRCs are up to date, your, your drill table up to date, your fab banks are up to date, your stack up is basically the same as you have defined in your CAD tool and your fab drying, it does match, you know, and these are the things that you should uh, incorporate in your design, I guess.